Hi, welcome to this week's episode of The Pool Guy Show. Today I'm going to be talking about a subject that I think is critical if you own a business, and that is, are you making a profit or are you just spinning your wheels out there? This podcast is brought to you by Ennio Pools. EnioPools.com has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. This podcast is also brought to you by Riptide Pool Vacuum System. Riptide is a powerful vacuum system that picks up the large debris from the bottom of the pool rapidly. If you have a pool service or if you're a homeowner with a pool that gets a lot of large debris in it, Riptide Vacuum would be a perfect tool to have. You can learn more about the Riptide at www.riptidevac.com. So let me just jump right in here and talk about one of the subjects that I think is really critical for anyone with a small business, any kind of service business. I'm going to focus today specifically on our industry here, the pool service business, but if you own a gardening service or any other kind of service business or establishment, Uh, one of the key things is, are you making a profit or not? And what I mean by profit is that after you pay all your bills for your business expense and then pay all your uh, normal household bills, your mortgage, your any other payments you may have that are reoccurring, and at the end of the month, is there anything left in the bank that you would call a profit? And this could be anywhere from 500 to five thousand dollars and if you're running a business and at the end of the month there's nothing in the bank they would consider profit which means that you don't have any balance left after everything else is paid then your business is probably not making money and I'll address a few things to help you um, to see if you're making money or not and how to correct that problem if you're not making any profit in your particular business and again I'll focus on pool service here but you can apply it to any a small business. So I have a friend who was a CPA and he took over his family's gardening business and they have about 90 service accounts and he went through the books and was looking over everything. He went out on the gardening route with um, his family members and saw how hard they were working at each stop, cutting the grass, doing all the landscaping, um, even doing some irrigation repair. And then at the end of the first month or two when he started looking at the books and seeing if there was actually any money made, he realized that they weren't making any money at all. They paid the family members, paid the employees, paid for all the supplies, that they were not making a profit, and they were actually losing money. And this is actually pretty typical in the pool service industry also. So one of the first things that you have to know about any kind of service business is that you're in the business to make money, to make a profit. So if you're not making a profit doing your line of work, you may be better off just getting a job somewhere else and getting a regular salary um, that'll pay your bills and you'll actually have money left over. Because if you're running a business and not making money, it's really more of a hobby and a waste of time, basically. So let me go over a few things um, that you have to address. And one of the first things you want to address is your service rate. Now, is your service rate set at the right level to make a profit, or is it too low? And there's a really great I Love Lucy episode. I'm a big fan of the show. And in this episode, Lucy and Ethel started a business. I think they were making a a jam. And they bought the jars, they bought all the ingredients, and they were making these and selling them. And then uh, Ricky came home and found them working really hard and making tons of this product. And he added up the cost of everything, and he found out that they were losing money with every jar they sell. And that's kind of how it could be in the business. If you service pools and you charge $85 a month and your chemical costs are 20, then you put in your gas costs and in your equipment replacement costs or purchase of new equipment, then you add the wear and tear of your vehicle and the wear wear and tear on your body. And you may not be making a profit depending on how much it costs for all the other variables in your business versus how much you charge for service in your area. And if you own a small business, you know that you're putting a lot of hours into it, especially when you first start. And so you may not be making money in respects to an hourly rate, hourly hourly wage. So what you need to do is you want to, at the end of the month, sit down and take all the numbers, all the gross uh, receipts that you get. So you add that number up and then you minus all the other costs, your supplies, your equipment, 
your fuel cost, um, the wear and tear on your vehicle. You can kind of do a sinking fund for this. You can kind of estimate how much you're going to spend each year on repairs and tires and things like that. And then you put it all on paper, and then you'll see your gross net, which is the money you get before your taxes. And then just divide that by how many hours you work, and you'll kind of get an idea of what your hourly wage is. And you may be surprised you're making $5 an hour, or you may be surprised you're making $40 an hour. It just depends on um, you know, how those numbers come out. And if you're making $5 an hour, you kind of have to sit there and think of what you can do to make some changes to make your hourly rate go up and to actually make your business profitable. So I had someone come over to my house and give me an estimate to clean the grout in my kitchen, tie out the grout between the tiles in my kitchen, and he quoted me $180 to clean that grout in my kitchen. And so I told my son, he's 10 years old now, hey, you know, I'll pay you 180 bucks if you want to do it yourself. So we bought the materials he needed. That was some of the expenses there. He bought a brush to clean between the tiles. Then we bought a five pound bag of baking soda and he bought a bottle of white vinegar and he started cleaning the grout. And it's a really long process. If you ever try cleaning it, it takes a long time, but the results are really good. And he realized that the amount of time he's putting into it, that he would probably take weeks to finish at the rate he was going. And it would, to him, he wanted $180 sooner so he can spend it. Um, so what he did was, was kind of funny. He's kind of an, a little entrepreneur. He hired my wife for $50 of his money to follow him on the floor with a sponge to kind of wipe and detail the work. So he would scrub it, and then she would come behind and detail it. So in the end, he finished in about a week. He got his money, minus the expenses for the supplies and the money he paid my wife, and he netted about $110, uh, which for him was a lot of money, and he uh, got a really good profit out of it, I think. So, you know, that example is to show you that um, if you think about it and you, you put things down on paper and you really want to make the money, that you can do it. And, you know, he worked hard that week to get that money. And I think for a small business owner, working hard is one of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you don't show a profit at the end of that, it's very discouraging. And so when you're starting out in the business, setting your service rate is important. Um, a lot of guys will undercut their competition. So if someone's charging 95 a month for pool service, they'll jump in and charge $85 a month. Uh, the danger here is you're losing $10 per stop by undercutting your competition. And the real danger is by doing that, you're actually losing more money than if you were to keep the same rate and maybe throw in a different incentive. For instance, instead of cutting your rate from 95 to 85 to get a new account, you can tell the customer, I'll clean your filter for the first time for free, no charge. And typically, the filter cleaning charge is anywhere from $70 to $85, uh, some places even higher than that. And so right there, the customer will save $85 on the filter cleaning. Now, what do you lose when you do that? You'll lose the money you would make from the filter cleaning, but basically, it's just your time and maybe some material costs, which are pretty minimal. But if you were to cut your rate from $95 to $85 to get that account, and let's say you did that account for two years, you would lose $240 over that two-year period by cutting the rate initially versus giving a free filter cleaning and losing $85, which you'll make up by cleaning the filter three more times in that two-year period. So you really didn't lose that much money by giving a free filter cleaning versus cutting your rate down to get the account. So the danger in cutting your rate down is that you're going to establish a precedent and all of your rates are going to be lower. So if you have uh, 20 pools at a $10 discount over your competition, that's $200 a month you're losing right there. Translates to $2,400 in one year. And if you multiply that by another 40 accounts, and you're doing 60 accounts and you're giving a discounted rate to get into the account and to undercut your competition, that $10 cut in your rate over 60 accounts is $7,200 a year. So you're definitely piling up the losses by undercutting your competition in a lot of cases. So you don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to lower the market rate in your area. So how can you charge the same rate and get the customer? Well, there's a, several ways you can do this, and I can go over this in more detail. And if you really want to expand your business, um, what I recommend is to join my coaching group. And for as little as $10 a month, you can text me in real time 
And for $20 a month, you can call me in real time. And there's a really great group thread that's in there through the GroupMe app, and you can post questions. You can learn a lot in a week or two just on the thread, listening to other pool guys, how they run their business, how they make a profit. And there's a lot of great information there. And so my site, I can actually go one, you know, direct you from a one-on-one -on -one point in your business and your area to help you maximize your service rate, maximize your business. But there's a lot of things you can do to promote yourself over your competition in your area without cutting your rate. And a good way to do that is to highlight something about your service that stands out above the other businesses in your area. And this could be a simple fact, like you're a sole proprietor and your competition has employees out there servicing the pools. So you can promote the fact that you're an independent person and you're going to take better care of the pool for that fact. Or on the flip side, if you're a company that has employees, you can promote the fact that um, the customer is not going to miss any service because if someone misses a day of work, another person will step in. And if you're a service business with a lot of employees and, and repair techs, you can promote it as a fact that if there's a problem, you can have your pool repaired quickly by a, one of the service techs that you that are employed by you. So there's two ways of doing that from both ends of the spectrum there. You can also um, show that you can respond quickly when they have a question or when they call or text you or email you that you're on the ball and you get back to them as quickly as possible with an answer. Um, also, you can become an expert in your field and you can do this in many ways, but a lot of it is going to the trade shows, taking the classes. You can watch my videos and learn a lot from that. There's trade magazines in every, biz every trade. In our trade, there's the service industry news, where there's articles that will help you expand your knowledge of the industry. And there's Aqua Magazine, which is another great way to get knowledge and gain information quickly to make yourself an expert in the field, which means that you're going to make less errors and mistakes as you're servicing the pool. And the pools will stay blue and swim ready more so than not. And of course, uh, my coaching group, I can also help you um, directly if you're at a pool side and need help with something, I can definitely help you through a situation and save you from uh, making any kind of errors or um, things that would cost you business. So those are some ways that you can kind of promote yourself in the same general area as someone else, your competition, so to speak, and garner more accounts without cutting your service rate. Offer that one free filter cleaning. And a good way to expand your business is to Offer any customer that refers someone to you another free filter cleaning. Instead of giving them a month free of service, just offer them another free filter cleaning for anyone they refer to you. And that way you minimize your losses there in that respect and you can gain a lot more accounts. And who wouldn't want to refer you to save $85 um, every six months on the pool service? I definitely would recommend someone to save money and they would do the same thing also. And so if you sit down at the end of the month and you see that you're not making a profit, maybe you have $500 extra every month after you pay everything, I wouldn't consider that a profit because that's pretty close to break even. Uh, more or less, a profit means that you're making $2,000, maybe $5,000 a month, uh, maybe even higher depending on how you have your business set up. But you definitely want to be making a profit in the business. So if you discover you're not making a profit, you can simply raise your rates if they're too low. So if you're charging $85 a month, and everyone else is charging 95 raising your rates wouldn't be a bad idea. That would definitely help. If you feel that raising the rates would cause you to lose some customers, then you're going to have to market yourself and do the things I mentioned to kind of garner more accounts. Charge those accounts at a premium rate, which is 95 maybe even more if you can in your area. And before I go further, every area is a little bit different. Um, California versus Florida versus Texas, the rates are going to be all over the board depending on what cities you service. So I'm using this as an example. Your service rate in your area may be a lot higher or maybe even lower. So, but let's say that you want to raise your rates to match your competition. You could definitely do that. Um, if you're going to lose customers by doing that, you want to garner more customers at the higher rate and slowly um, wean off the lower paying customers. You can sell a portion of your route to someone else. Or you can raise the rates and see if they quit. If they quit, you don't really lose anything because you have another account to replace that one that you would have lost. And you're going to be making more profit over the course of the year. So it's kind of like a win-win at that point. And if you have more higher paying accounts, if you charge some 100, 105, then you can kind of keep some of the lower paying accounts too and it'll kind of balance out. 
So you may not need to drop the $85 a month customer if the pool is pretty easy. Just keep them on the books and then also have someone else that's paying $95 or $100 a month to kind of balance that account out. So you kind of see where I'm going with that. So the service rate is important. You know, I have a plumber that I use for all my uh, plumbing in my rental properties and um, he's probably the best plumber in my area. He charges a premium rate and I'm willing to pay that because he's really good at what he does. I know that I send him over there. I'm not going to have a problem with anything. And then he'll call me when he's done telling me that it's fixed and then I'll mail him a check. And um, it's a great business relationship and he charges a premium, like I said, but he's really good. So I can't complain about that. And if you provide great service in your area, um, you're going to get customers that are going to appreciate that and pay you that rate. And I wouldn't hire anyone else but him. If he's not available, I may call someone else, but I grudgingly will do that. And I definitely would pay him his rate to be there. If you can make some kind of exception to get there, I even pay him a little extra because he's that good. So I definitely would recommend um, raising your rates if you need to to make a profit in your business. And if you raise your rates and you still seem like you're not making a profit, you may want to reevaluate your business model. You can either expand your services or you can cut your services down. So what I mean is this, if you're not offering acid washes as part of your service, you may want to consider doing that. And that may boost your profit if you do two acid washes a month. That may put more money into your on your books. Or if you're doing services that are actually um, that you're losing money on. For instance, a lot of times people will do repairs as a side business and they'll spend you know three hours putting in a piece of equipment and in that time that they're doing that they could have serviced six pools instead of doing that one repair. So you may want to pick up more service accounts and not do as many repairs and that also will bring in more profit. And to be honest with you, in this industry, the service end of the of the pool route is probably where the most profit is anyway, as far as time and the amount of time you spend to make the money at each stop. So reevaluate your whole business model at some point, too, if you're not making a profit and see if you can add services or subtract services that aren't making you the profit that you should be making. And if you're spending too much time at each stop, that's a problem, too. So the maximum um, I'll spend at one pool is 25 minutes. If I'm at a pool for more than 25 minutes, I'm losing money. So if you're spending 35, 45 minutes at a pool, um, you're losing money. Now, in some areas like Texas, where you're dealing with 40 or 50,000 gallon pools, you're going to need to spend you know, 45 minutes at a stop. However, you're going to be getting paid for that. So you want to make sure that you charge a good rate for a you know, 50 or 60,000 gallon pool. And I'm talking over $200 for a pool that size if you're going to be spending 45 minutes to an hour there. So you definitely want to charge the right rate in your area. Now in California, we don't have too many of those giant pools. All our pools are pretty uh, normal in size. I think the largest pool I have on my route is 35,000 gallons. All the rest are, you know, 15 to 20,000 gallons. So you definitely want to make sure you charge the right rate for the amount of time you're spending at the account you're servicing. You also want to make sure that you're charging the customers for certain products that are not freebies. And if you do are giving away products that you should charge for, evaluate that also. So for instance, if you're using the Pool RX in the pool and you're putting that in for the customer, the cost of that, the blue unit is around, you know, $50. And if you're putting it in for free, you may be losing money if you put in 20 of those units. So you may want to charge, change that model and charge the customer for the Pool RX unit. If you're putting in conditioner for the customer at the start of the season, you may want to charge them a $35 fee for conditioner that are putting in for free. So see if there's anything that you're doing that you're losing money on that you can actually charge the customer for. And to be honest with you, to run a business profitably in this industry, in this day and age, the only chemicals that you can probably get away with giving for free to the customer is the liquid chlorine and the muriatic acid. So anything outside of those two chemicals, you're going to be charging the customer um, the retail price for those chemicals, and you're not going to be including those in your service. That includes three-inch tablets, any kind of phosphate removers or anything like that. The customer should pay for those. You know, you take your car to the mechanic and it needs a part. You don't expect your mechanic to throw that in with the labor charge that he's charging you. You expect to pay for that part. Even if it's a small part that costs him $10, he still charges you for it because that adds up to a lot of loss for him. So it's no different in the pool industry. 
I think people have the impression that since they're paying for the service every month, that everything is included, but that's not the case. You take your car into the mechanic for your oil change, that's a routine service, um, but everything else that he does, he charges you for, and that's the same in this industry too. Um, but it's a misconception, I think, and I think a lot of service people set themselves up that way to be interpreted that way by giving customers a lot of free items that should be charged for. So evaluate how much how much stuff the customer is actually getting at no charge that you should be charging for. Um, bottom line is everything that you do, um, it may seem like nickel and diming, but it adds up over a course of a year in business. So if you give every customer a free chlorine floater and you give 40 of those away and it costs you $10 each, you just lost $400 that year. And you know that, that multiplies that by other items that are, be, are being given to the customer at no charge. And like any industry, you want to make a profit. I mean, we're out there working in 100 degree weather. This whole month of July in California has been over 100 almost every day. You know, we're sweating. We're really, you know, killing, killing ourselves out there. You have wear and tear on your body that you're going to have to deal with later on. And there's a lot of different factors that go into this. But bottom line is you need to be paid for what you do out there. And you need to be paid well for what you do out there. So I think as an industry as a whole, um, you know, people have a misconception of this industry and you definitely have to change that conception and make it so that people see this industry as a profession, just like a plumber or electrician. You know, you treat your plumber and electrician with a lot of respect when they give you an estimate, same with your mechanic. And it should be the same in the pool service industry where we provide a service that not everyone can do. And we provide a service that the homeowner doesn't want to do themselves. And there should be profit in that. So I'm going to wrap it up here. But there's probably a lot more I could talk about in this one. And I'll probably readdress this, um, these things in another episode. And if you do do service and you want more one-on-one -on -one help, definitely check out my coaching site. You can find out more about it from my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. And there's a link that will take you to the coaching site. And you can see all the benefits. And i got to be honest with you. Um, the rates I charge, the $10 for texting, the $20 for texting and calling, are extremely low for what I offer. And you pretty much get free, um, a free subscription to my services by all the benefits you get. You get 10% off your general liability insurance. You also get 10% off the Riptide pool vacuum system. And when you apply for the general liability insurance, they'll waive the $100 application fee. So right there, you pretty much paid for a whole year at the $10 level, plus some monthly savings and your general liability insurance. I also give you a free copy of my ebook, and I mentioned the group chat, and this is a great thread where there's a lot of different pool guys on there, and you can glean a lot of experience just from listening to what they have to say about what they do out there on a day-to-day -day basis. So definitely check that out if you're in the industry. If you're a homeowner and you need more help with your pool, an ebook available on my website as well as a new print version available on Amazon.com. You can find a link for the print version of my book on my website also. So I hope you found this episode helpful. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.